talking about wheels. And here we have um, some of the larger wheels that you'll find in your NXC or EV3 starter kit or any other resource kit that you get. And these will probably be the wheels that you'll be using as driving wheels or the wheels you're connecting to your motors. So our first section here will be talking about uh, your driving wheels. So I'm just gonna go over these quickly. We have our large thin wheel here, which has um, a big white rim in the middle, but it's very thin. Our next two wheels here actually have the same hub, which is this uh, small hub that's uh, pretty wide. So our first tire here is larger, but it's kind of squishy on the sides. It's got air in the uh, holding it between uh, the rim and the tire, and it has a lot of good traction. See there. So our next tire here, um, it's tight to the rim, so there's not much air surrounding it in the middle, and it's really smooth. Since some wheels and tires are bigger, that means the circumference is greater, so it can cover more distance for the same number of rotations. That makes it faster and more accurate. Now you can look at the measurements. By now you probably have a good understanding about driving wheels and how that you only need two driving wheels connected to two of these motors to be able to turn, go forward, go backward, and maneuver your robot across the map. But you also might realize that if you only have two wheels, you only have two points of contact with the mat, meaning you're going to tip over. So a solution to that is by using something we call a third wheel. And a third wheel basically helps you have three points of contact with the mat, meaning you won't tip over. The most common method is a caster wheel. And caster wheels are just these small wheels connected to the robot and swivel around. They uh, create minimal friction and allow you, your robot to turn and move across the mat. Another popular choice are sliders. And sliders are just these smooth pieces that um, push against the mat. And they allow your robot to move around freely, but they generate um, a lot more friction. And last but not least, we have a ball design. And actually, LEGO has this piece that's a metal ball, and it pretty much has zero friction, and it moves around the mat really nicely, but you do need this extra piece. Or you can create one yourself by actually using these larger LEGO plastic balls and building a frame around them, but they will take up a lot of space. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to make the standard caster wheel. So you're going to need some angle changing pieces, some wheels, one of these uh, beam connector pieces, and two red axles. So what you're going to do is connect the wheels together with the red axle and put it through one of these angle changing pieces. Like so. And then you're going to attach the this um, black piece over here. You can also use two long blue pegs, if that works for you, on top of here. Continuing on, we will then attach this angle changing piece on top. And here comes the tricky part. Um, you're going to have to attach this angle changing piece in the middle of here. You can see that. Uh, using this red axle. So what I recommend is putting it through halfway here and then sticking this on and pushing it the rest. Now you have one of these pivot points up here. So you can attach um, one of these um, uh, yellow pegs, which are an axle on one side and a peg on the other side. And this is like the blue peg, but if you remember from our pegs video, this is a slippery version of it. So it allows it to spin freely like so. These caster wheels can be built in numerous different ways. The standard one here is just the first one I learned. And here is another one that I made. 
Um, this is a lot less pieces, and in fact, it's actually one um, peg hole shorter than the standard one, meaning it's a lot more compact. And also, if you notice here, this is this um, casserole has a little piece protruding from the wheel. Meanwhile, this all the mechanics are in between. And another one that I made, which is the most sleek and compact one here, it just it's pretty much two wheels. And as you can see, this is one shorter than the newer one actually. And it's all all the mechanics are fitted in between the two wheels right here. But this requires a lot of special mechanic pieces, as you can see in here. Here's the little axle holding the wheels together. And here's just a little preview of it. And I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out how to make this. We'll take an in-depth look at rollers, which can be used as your third point of contact. So rollers don't have much friction because they're uh, it consists of a ball, so it can roll all the way around. So these rollers, they move up and down like this, and they have to be pressed down to move around, or else it won't really touch. So these rollers, they're pretty small. They are Lego pieces made by Legos, but another option is making your own large roller. So these are much bigger, and it consists of a Lego plastic ball and um, this frame on the outside made of axles and other pieces, but it could still roll around. So it could be better in some ways. To give you guys a better understanding about wheels and driving wheels, I've come up with a couple of tips and tricks. So number one is what I like to call finding your wheels. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two of the type of driving uh, wheels you want to use and connect it with an axle. Then you're going to either draw a straight line or find a straight line and roll this uh, along it. So you want to try and mix, mix and match these type of wheels until you get a good combination that makes it go straight. And this way, it will balance your robot's wheels out. Next, we have something that I like to call two-point contact. So to make sure your wheel is sturdy, you want it to have two points of contact with your robot. One is going to be a, the axle connecting it to the motor, and the second will be the axle running through some sort of outside beam. So this will ensure the wheel does not wobble because it's very important that your robot's really reliable and is able to consistently um, uh, execute the correct number of degrees. Uh, I see this a lot and especially on our own robot, sometimes on the mat dust or particles may accumulate and your wheels might get dusty. And this will affect your robot's behavior because slippage may occur. So what you want to do is take a paper towel and just wipe it off. I see this a lot, especially with some uh, rookie teams. What happens is they take a wheel and they just stick it on an axle right next to the motor. And if you see what happens here is the tire will rub against the actual motor. So this is definitely not good. It's also, the wheel is also a little bit tilted. And in order to fix this, you just have to add these bushing pieces uh, as a spacer. So if you notice, there's actually two sides to this hub. There's this open side here, and there's actually the one with spokes. And the one with spokes is um, a lot more, is protruding outwards and uh, this, instead of this one, which is actually two spaces in. So all I have to do is just put a spacer through it and use the one at the side with the spokes and connect it through. That way, it'll leave a little gap, so this won't affect, uh, it won't rub against the actual motor itself. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching.